I was serving overseas, in the military overseas, in Yokosuka, Japan, from 2012 to 2014. Since my time there, I was settled and had been there for two years and seeing a very lovely girl named May. May had told me that she was pregnant with my child while on deployment. I took responsibility for my actions, so we started to plan. During the second year of my service, during the winter six months since May gave me the news, my ship had been in dry dock for a year, and each ship, depending on how big the ship is, had a handful of duty sections. A group of crew members who watched the ship and took care of it while the rest of the crew was off. So, it was my section's turn to watch the ship. During our evening meal, one of my shipmates asked me if I could switch watches with him, being that my current watch was standing in the freezing cold for five hours. He thought giving me the barracks watch would lift up my spirits. It did. I took the proposal in a heartbeat. We both let our section leaders know of the change. At 11.45, I was on my way to the barracks to watch the barracks from midnight to 6am. The barracks watch was there for safety and to see that the right people were in their respective rooms. I arrived right on time with five minutes to spare. I bought myself and the person I was relieving a coffee. Thought it might help them on the cold walk home. As the night progressed, I made my rounds every half an hour, and when in the wee hours of the morning came around, I started to doze off. I was awoken by a resident who couldn't sleep due to their neighbour crying. If you can get that girl back in her room and keep her quiet, I won't tell the supervisors that you weren't sleeping, he muttered, as if I didn't have a choice. The barracks was three floors high, full of people, but at this hour the silence had a certain eeriness to it. Like you could hear your own heartbeat. My footsteps echoed like I was in some sort of catacomb. As I made my way upstairs, I began to hear sobbing. I shook my head in disappointment. This should be fun, I said to myself. I reached the third floor and I made my way down the hallway. The sobbing sounded like it was coming from the laundry room. Maybe the pool girl didn't want to wake her roommates, I thought to myself. As I made my way into the laundry room, the sobbing was low, like she tried to hide it. I stepped forward. Miss, are you okay? I whispered. I turned the light on and I saw a young girl sitting on the floor facing the wall, leaning on the washing machine. I asked again. Miss, are you alright? I put some strain on it so she may hear me past the sobbing. I still waited for a response, but still got nothing. It was late. I was tired and getting impatient. I got close to her. Hey, lady, are you alright? I think you should call it a night. I yelled as I walked closer. Just as I did, the girl sprung up quickly. She looked sick, dark eyes, greasy hair. She didn't look happy, like I ruined her crying game. Before I could open my mouth, she let out an ear-shattering scream, and it just kept climbing in pitch. I got closer to shut her up, but the noises were too much and I collapsed, and the last thing I saw was the sickly girl with her menacing face staring straight at me. All of a sudden, I woke up in the office where I watched the cameras. I wrote it off as a bad dream from eating takeout. But I felt different. I felt cold. I didn't sleep for the rest of my watch. A week later, I got news from May. She told me that there were complications with the baby, and she had a miscarriage. I couldn't help think that that young girl and my night terror and the miscarriage could be linked. I'm back stateside now, and the experience has left a major impression on me.